everyone. My name is Teacher Shell. Welcome to another Circle Time with me. I wish I could be seeing all of my students in person, but for now we still need to stay at home. So, can you tell me what your favorite toy is? Is your favorite toy a car? You say, my favorite toy is a car. Or is your favorite toy a unicorn? My favorite toy is a unicorn. Or is your favorite toy a superhero? My favorite toy is a superhero. Can you tell me what your favorite toy is? I'm listening. Oh, very nice. All right, now let's go over the days of the week. Starting with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What day is it today? Can you tell me? Yes, that's right, it is Friday today. And what do we say on Friday? Yay, it's Friday! Let's go over the months of the year. Everybody, get your guitar. You got your guitar ready? All right, let's sing. January, February, March, April. Get the drums. May, June, July. August, get your keyboard, September, October, November, December. All right, what month are we in? Does anybody know? Yes, you got it. We are in May and May is the fifth month of the year. Good job. Let's go over the weather now. Sunny, rainy, cloudy, snowy, windy, stormy, sun and clouds, foggy, and my favorite, a colorful rainbow. Can you tell me how is the weather today? Let's look outside. It's sunny and it's very hot. Good job. The Giant Surprise, a Narnia story, which is inspired by the stories of C.S. Lewis. This story is written by Haiwan Oram and illustrated by Tudor Humphreys. Shall we step into Narnia now? Let's go. Narnia, a world made of magic from the start of time, full of marvelous creatures, talking beasts, and trees that sometimes get up and dance. Now pull on your boots and splash through the muddy marshlands, home to the web-footed, web-fingered marsh wiggles. Meet Puddlegum, the most famous of them all. Get to know his niece, Lally, the brave little wiglet, as together they help the marsh mice challenge the roaring, rock-throwing, not-so-clever giants of Shribble Gorge. It all started one otherwise peaceful morning. Puddle Glum was fishing and Lally was playing with her boat when two marsh mice pushed through the reeds. There's a terrible roaring going on, said Greep, and sloshing and galoshing, added Greypaw from behind. Puddle Glum sniffed the ear. Giants, he said gloomily. But it can't be, said Lally. Giants never come to our marshes. Believe me, said Puddle Glum, these giants do. And they're not just getting closer, they're here. Stand and fight, cried Greep, 
Fight and stand, cried Graypaw. Dive and swim, cried Puddleglum. Lally dived. Puddleglum dived after her as up roared the giant dribble and the giant cracker whack, waving giant fishing rods. In a flash, one hooked Greep and the other hooked Graypaw. Let us down, squealed Greep, you great big mice catching giants. Let us down this very minute or be sorry, squeaked Graypaw, but the giants took no notice. Dangling Greep and Graypaw in the air, they turned on their heels and strode off the way they'd come. Gilly schlop, gilly schlop. After them, cried Lily. Yes, after us, cried the mice, and hurry. Puddle Glum put Lally on his shoulders and set off. His legs were like stilts, his feet like paddles. He knew the land like the back of his hand, and he was never far behind. Gilly schlop. Gilly schlop. But when they arrived at the giant's gorge, there was no sign of Greep or Graypaw. Only roaring, raging, not very clever, rock and rubble throwing giants. Dodging boots and bits of boulder, Puddle Glum sprang from rock to rock until he found Dribble and Cracker Whack. Where are our mice? he demanded. The giants looked blank. Then a big beam broke across Dribble's face. Ah, mice. Us remember. Us catch mice. Lots of mice. But when a rock whizzed by, he forgot what he was saying and roared off for a game of rock shies. Lally shivered. Do you think they've already eaten them? Worse, said Puddle Glum. I think they're collecting them to make one big mice pie. Now, can you keep them busy while I look around? Lally's heart sank. All right, she sighed. I'll try. Even though she was trembling and the rock was hard, Lally managed some of her best cartwheels. The giants were so surprised that one by one they gathered around. When Lally saw she had their full attention, she took a deep breath and shouted, Listen, giants, we're going to play a game. Game, game, roared the giants. Game of rock shees. No, Lally yelled back firmly. A game of... What? Her mind raced. What game could a little wiglet play with these giant rock throwers? Then suddenly she had it. One of her good ideas. A game of making things. Making things, roared Dribble. Yes, yes, us remember, us making mice pies. No, yelled Lally, rock sandwiches, much better. Rock sandwiches, roared the giants. Yum, yum, yum. Now first for the filling, said Lally. We take a lot of rocks and crush them well. Lot of rocks, roared the giants. Crush him well. They rushed around collecting rocks, crushing rocks with rock hammers and all the time roaring. Yum, yum, yum. Very good, said Lally. And for the bread, slices of fresh hills. Not too thick, mind, she called after them. Medium thin. And all the time... She had the giant slicing. Puddle Glum was looking for Greep and Graypaw. High and low he searched, up the gorge and every gully until he came to the giant's tumble-down castle. Here at last he heard what he was beginning to fear. He would... The sound of mice, lots of mice, coming from the rocked-up larder. And over there squeaking and squealing and scampering and panicking was Greep's voice trying to calm them. Gally up, gally ho, stand your ground. Never let a giant jelly your legs. Greep, Graypaw, all of you, Puddle Glum called. Hold on and I'll soon have you out. And while he used a giant corkscrew to make holes in the larder and free the mice... 
Lily sent the giants to the river for lots of gooey mud ketchup. Yum, 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 they drooled as they scooped it up and slapped it on. Rock sandwiches ready, us eat. They smacked their lips, they bit in, their cheeks bulged, their teeth ground. Lally could hardly believe it. Stop, stop, you don't understand. This is a game. We don't eat the sandwiches, but there is no stopping the giants. Oh no, Lally cried. This has gone too far. Uncle Puddleglum, help! Right here, said Puddleglum, leaping up beside her. And whatever you did, it was just the thing. You kept the giants busy, and I found the mice. But look, cried Lally, they're eating rocks and hills and mud. We have to stop them. They might choke or... Don't worry, said Puddleglum. Watch this. He picked up a small rock and another and another and hurled them down on the plain. At once, the giants forgot about eating. Rock shees, they roared. Us remember, us play rock shees. And their rock throwing began all over again. Only this time with pieces of hilly, muddy rock sandwiches. Poor old giant, said Lally, as Puddle Glum led them all safely home. I expect they even throw rocks in their sleep. If they remember to sleep, said Graypaw. Well, it's lucky they forgot to eat, said Greep, or we'd be mice pie. And you still could be, said Puddle Glum, so prepare for the worst, and it won't catch you by surprise. Well, I much prefer thinking the best, said Lally, when they were settled by the fire, and that was a big adventure I won't forget in a hurry. True, true, sighed Puddle Glum. Nothing like adventure to remind us. Life is an all fishing and mud winkle stew. So what's next, I wonder? Ogres? Dragons? Whatever it is, said Lally, when it comes, I know where I want to be. So do we, said the mice softly. With the bravest marsh wiggle and the bravest little wiglet in all of Narnia. The end.